Good morning, ladies, and welcome to the Women's Connection of Groves First Baptist Church. We are excited to share some time with you this morning. I'm here with Teresa Wormington, and as you can tell, we are following the guidelines, and we are sheltering at home. We're talking to you from each of our homes, so we are separate, and yet we're together. We're connected, and that's what this program is all about, is helping to keep you connected as we go through this, this time of the virus that's hit our nation and, and has hit the world. I wanted to um, share a verse with you this morning to get started, and that verse is Psalm 66, 16, and it says this, Come and hear all you who fear the Lord, and I will tell you what he has done for my soul. That's what this program is all about sharing the word of God and sharing with one another. But I want to point out to you that the word fear in that verse doesn't mean being afraid of God. It means being in holy awe of God, of who he is and the great and mighty things that he has done. In that particular verse, the psalmist is making reference to an individual person. But if you look back in the same chapter, in verse 5, it tells us to come and see what the Lord has done, but then it's followed by a brief description of, of what those things are, the things that God had done for the children of Israel. And the verse goes on to say, he is awesome in his deeds toward the children of man. And of course, that's in reference to mankind, men and women and children as well. And so, as I said, that's what we're here for today. And so I want to start out by welcoming you, Teresa. How are you this morning? Doing good. Doing very well. Good, good. Well, we're just going to get right to it. And uh, I just want to start out with letting our ladies know something about you that maybe they don't know. And one of the things that I know is that you and your family love to take motorcycle trips together. And so tell us share with us what one of your favorite trips was and tell us why. Okay. Um, we do have a great time together, but I think the one that probably stands out the most, um, there's always there many memories that stand out from lots of them, but one we went to Gatlinburg and um, it was my sister and brother-in-law and brother and sister-in-law and Gary and I, we'd been riding long hours got in very late after dark and we were very tired and so we put the motorcycles up and go in and we're just going to shower and get to bed but Gary decided to go out on the hot tub they had a hot tub on the deck and so he thought he would relax in that a few minutes now I have to tell you before before I go on that this is up in bear country and there were warnings, get all your, you know, if you have any food in your car on the motorcycles, get it all off. There was a bear protective trash can. All the decor in the little cabin is bear decor. So there's the setup. Well, Gary goes and gets into this hot tub and he's just really relaxing from a hard day riding, long day. And my brother, Rick, decided it would be really fun to put the bear rug that was in the living room over himself and crawl out onto the deck in the dark on this on this uh, deck at this cabin so he goes crawling out right in front of the hot tub well in gary's mind that was a bear <laughs> <laughs> and so he grabs the lid and he's trying to put it between him and the bear and get as far away as he can and we just all in the house hear all this commotion and noise and chaos going on down at the deck and laughing and squealing and so we run down and there gary is still sitting there just trying to catch his breath and laughing still in the hot tub my brother still has the bear rug and big old bear head over him. He's just laying across the deck, leaned against the rail. Can't even catch his breath. Just tears rolling and squealing. He's laughing so hard. So that stands out because we just, we still, my brother cannot tell the story without just laughing still. And before you think he's too mean, Gary really deserved this because he had just, my brother had just gotten a new Harley before this trip or not long before. And so Gary thought it would be fun to mess with him a little. And a few nights before had dropped oil under his bike, like it was leaking his brand new <laughs> to make him think something was wrong with that new bike he had just got. So anyway, they kind of deserve each other, but that stands out to me just because it's such a fun memory and story. And, but I can tell you many, we've had lots of great adventures on the motorcycles. 
No, that is that is a funny story. Thanks for sharing that. I know uh, you had mentioned at one time that um, your dad even rides a motorcycle. He does, and he well, he did. He he had a slingshot. It has two wheels in front and one in back, and I think it looks like the Batmobile. And uh, he's gotten to take a few trips with us. And he didn't buy this till he was 85, but he's taken a few trips with us on this uh, slingshot and had great fun. And we even went to the Creation Museum and the Ark with him. And so, yeah, wonderful memories riding. Um, that's awesome. Well, I remember something happened with him last year on a motorcycle. Yes, at, at 86, he was riding the slingshot. It was a beautiful day. It will be a year ago, April 20th. He was riding, uh, just enjoying the weather, going to visit, visit relatives, and he came on the crest of a hill. And on the other side of the hill, a car had stopped, trying to decide if they were going to turn in his lane, right in his lane. And there was no missing it. He was upon it before he could do anything. He swerved, but he hit the vehicle. Um, fortunately, the people in the vehicle were not hurt, but my dad was thrown from the slingshot. And um, he, uh, he took a bad, bad fall from, we don't know how far, but he was thrown quite a ways mm. and uh, injured his head some, but we were very blessed that there was no brain trauma. It healed quickly, but he did break ribs and completely crushed his hip and uh, the bone in his thigh, um, had to have a rod put in from his knee to his hip. And so it was, it was really scary. He was 86 at the time. And, um, you know, it was, it was quite frightening. We didn't, hmm. we didn't know for sure what was going to take place after that. So very traumatic. Yes, hmm. for sure. So he was in the hospital a good while, wasn't he? Quite a while. And how's he doing now? He's doing great. I, I will add he actually in the hospital, they found cancer in his colon and had to take 12 inches out of that. And so, you know, maybe that was a little mixed blessing that they found that and, and removed that. Um, but, you know, it's, it's just amazing. Even at, at 86, he just, he's, he's 87 now, but he's healing beautifully. And uh, God has really, I mean, he kept him around for a purpose and he's doing well. He and my stepmom are, are still pastoring a church and mm -hmm. uh, he's getting around very well. So the, they found the cancer because he was in the hospital because he had had an accident, right? Yes, yes. Um, and he began to have some problems after the surgery with, you know, his system getting to working right. Mm -hmm. And so that's where they, they started doing some other tests to see what was going on and, wow. and found, found the cancer and removed that. So, so that's a situation where the Lord used something bad to bring something good out of it, right? Absolutely absolutely that's we, we feel that way yes yeah and I know uh, your dad's a preacher so uh, how did he spend his time in the hospital what did he do <laughs> <laughs> well my dad loves people and he loves the Lord and everywhere he's at he's going to share the Lord mm -hmm. um, and so it was kind of a mixed blessing I hated seeing him hurting and in the hospital but you know getting to be there and spend that time with him and my stepmom and siblings and even my daughter who is a nurse got to come and stay a while. And, you know, he just, he continues to impact us with his witness, with um, just his love for God. And as you know, medical staff would come in and out and doctors and nurses, and he was a witness to them. And if they could have stayed longer, he'd have talked to them all day, <laughs> but, but he was always a witness and he would ask them, you know, if they knew Jesus or, or what was, going on in their lives. And, and I got to witness him praying with his surgeon before he gave him, you know, did surgery on him. And, you know, it's just, um, it just continues to inspire and impact. I say everyone that knows him because that's just who he is. And so there was, there was mixed blessings, even in the tragedy. Well, wow. that's awesome. That, that is truly awesome. And as I'm listening to you, I'm thinking about how, your family has passed down God's word from generation to generation, because I know that you've done that with your grandchildren as well. Tell, tell me how you spend your time with your grandchildren. <laughs> well, <laughs> we're busy and chaotic like most children are, but um, I, I feel very, very um, driven to 
put in them God's word to, to maybe help them build that foundation. You know, life is hard. And the older I get, the more I see, you know, there's so much um, that we have to deal with in life and so many distractions. And they have, you know, they have with the modern technology, their little tablets, there's, you know, they're at school, not right now, but, yeah. but all these things that come at them. And I just feel like it's so important to put God's word in there because um, if I don't, how will they know, you know? And so I, I just feel like it's very important. And we, we spend time together in Bible study and they're from ages four to 14. Um, but modern technology again is very helpful. Even in that uh, we have a super book. We have right now media gives you lots of things that our church offers. Um, but also even just on the internet on YouTube and different things uh, there's different apps that have been a very big help. And, you know, just as you go, we play Bible trivia in the car. Um, you know, we spend time together um, learning. And uh, I, I just, I think that Deuteronomy 6 tells us to do that. And I feel like it's very important. And I think I'm more even aware, maybe even now than with my own children. It's, it's a crazy world we live in. We've got to, we've got to teach them how to armor up. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. And I believe the Lord has used you uh, in a mighty way to influence their lives. And uh, haven't you been able to lead a couple to Christ? The two oldest do have, have already accepted Christ. Mm -hmm. um, I hope I was a part of that. I wasn't actually leading them in the moment, mm -hmm. but they, I, my, I hope that my influence has helped them to be aware and understand. And they actually have done that on their own and uh, at their, at a at church. Um, and so it was, it's an awesome thing. My grandson that's 10, a couple of years ago, I was praying over him and say, you know, help, help their hearts to be sensitive when you speak to them, God, and was talking, you know, just a little bit about salvation. And he, after we finished, he said, Grammy, I already did that. Oh, and he told me that at a at a church that they go to once in a while in Tulsa that he had he had gone forward and done that and we didn't even know and so I was able to talk with him about that but um, what a blessing that God is so faithful mm -hmm. and um, you know I, I continue to try to prepare the little one's heart and and it's a it's ongoing just because they've accepted him you know that's just the beginning and I want to continue to teach them how to be strong in the Lord and how to love his word and, and that they can talk to him and he's always with them mm -hmm. and, you know, build that foundation. Life is, life is crazy. So uh, they have to have a good foundation or, or they won't battle the storms. That is so true. It's true with, with all of our children. Absolutely. I'm just so happy to hear the way that you are being an influence in the lives of yours. And um, I just uh, want to encourage our women that are, that are watching any that have grandchildren to pour into those little ones lives, the love of Christ and, and let them know that Jesus loves them. This I know for the Bible tells me so. Right. But let me ask you another question on a more personal level. Um, tell us about your day to day personal walk with Christ. What, what do you do to stay grounded? Well, there are so many distractions um, that I, I feel it, it's uh, very, very important. We have to be intentional um, about the time that we spend with, with God. And he tells us to be still and know he is God. And, and where else does our help come from? I was reading that psalm this morning. You know, our, psalms, our, our, our help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And so I take time. Uh, I'm not going to tell you that there's not a day I've missed because I do, but most every day I take time to sit and read through his word and I'm, I'm going through it again. There's so many, again, technology helps us with that. There's so many great apps and I'm going through one that has some little videos along with as you go through the Bible. And I've done this one before. It's my favorite one. And so I take time to read through God's word. Virginia, I feel like if he left us this Bible and we are privileged to have it, some don't, but we're privileged to have it, that it's important that I try to grow and understand. So I, I read, I don't understand everything, but I pray for his discernment and I love the scripture. And I really think if, if people will get into it, you know, the more that I love 
Christ, the more that I love God, the more I love his word. Mm -hmm. And if, as we hide it in our heart, it does strengthen us. And I love spending time talking to him, whether I'm on walks or just at time set aside to just focus on our relationship and not just what he can do for me or what he can give me, but loving him and knowing him. And I would encourage anyone that doesn't know him, seek him out because he loves you and there's nothing compared to the love of Jesus. Mm. That is very good. That is really, really good. You have been such an encouragement to us today. And uh, I was, my last question for you was going to be, what word of encouragement would you give our life <laughs> for this time in our lives? But I think you've done that. I think you've given <laughs> us that word. And I thank you for that. Well, I wanted to um, speak another word before we close out today, because at the time of this recording, today is Good Friday. It's yes. the day that Jesus gave his life on the cross for the sins of all, once yeah. for all time. And he's even seated now at the right hand of God the Father in heaven. But at the time uh, on Good Friday, what we call Good Friday now, at the time that Jesus hung on that cross, um, those that loved him, those that stood around the cross that loved him, for them it was a very sad day. Mm -hmm. And so today, as we think about that, we think about that sacrifice and we think about what he did for us and how he shed his blood for us. And yet, three days later, the most miraculous thing happened. He rose from the dead. He was resurrected. And um, as I said, is even now seated at the right hand of God the Father. And so as we go through this time of crisis in our world, not just our nation, not just in our homes, but in this entire world. As we go through this time of crisis, I cannot help but think that God has something good that is going to come out of all of this. We don't know what that is, but we do know that God is sovereign, that he knows the end from the beginning, and he knows all things. And so he knows what he has planned ahead for this world. Yes. And we need to keep our focus on him and trust that he is going to do what he's going to do and that it's going to be for our best in the long run. But until then, what can we do? We can pray mm -hmm. and pray for a time of revival. And I believe it's happening, right? Yes. We can read the Bible. Even yes. if you've never read it before, pick up a Bible and yeah. open it and begin to read. Begin in the book of John, where it talks about Jesus being the word of God. And then just press on toward the upward, God, uh, the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Press on, sweet sisters. And we're going to see you next week when I'll be interviewing Dee Humphreys. Until then, God bless you. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you for joining me.